Hey, hey what's up, brother. man? What's up? Yo, sorry for the these technical difficulties we're having at the moment. Um, we're gonna try one thing really quick, and if it doesn't work, we'll just do it through the through the audio right here. If that's okay with you, my brother. Okay, no problem. Yeah, of course. I'm no having a good morning so far, dude. Yeah, yeah, having a good morning. How about you, my friend? Doing well, brother. Thank you. So I also want to introduce you. This is my good, good friend, uh, Vis. Vis, this is Moicano. A little introduction there. Real hey, Moicano, what's up, nice man? Nice to meet you, Vis. Hey, nice what's to meet up, you, too, brother? Nice to meet you, bro. Hey, I think we should just do it the, the way we just had it, because otherwise I'm going to have to swap a bunch keep of things it, around. Keep it simple, Vis. All right, yeah, let's yeah. keep it simple for this one. All right, give me one sec here. Moicano, are you in Brazil right now? No, I'm in Orlando. Oh, you're in Orlando right now. Yeah. Do you usually do you like train and everything in the the U.S. or? Yeah. No. Usually, I uh, I like to to be at ATT to do my training okay. stuff. Uh -huh. I just go to Brazil to like to vacation. Right. But I I have training over there too. I see. I don't stop training. What you got going on in Orlando today, Moicano? Yeah, you we we traveling or are you doing something? For yeah, like no, therapy? we came. No, no, no. We came here to to see a friend from Brazil that is here, like uh, enjoying Disney and stuff with with his family, yeah. and we, we went here to to like to to go to the parks and stuff. That is awesome. The family. Man. Yeah. Yes. Well, hey, even more so. Thank you for hopping on with us when you're doing some like some. Uh... Some family traveling, bro. I appreciate you. No brother. problem, my brother. No problem. No problem. My pleasure. Uh, yeah. So let's let's do it in first. First and foremost, don't, the man doesn't really need much of an introduction. It's the money Moicano right here. Mm -hmm. Welcome in. Thank Thanks you. again, brother, for for hopping on with with Vis and I. Um, no problem, I, you no know, problem. we've been hanging out for a couple of weeks now, getting to shoot the shit. So I want to keep it nice and chill. But if you want to just take like two three minutes, I just give everybody like a little bit of a background. You know who you are, yeah. what it is you do, and where it is you come from, and then we'll take it from there. Yeah, no problem, my brother. No, my name is Renato Moicano. Uh, today, I am uh, a lightweight, uh, top top 13 UFC lightweight fighter, and I fight in UFC, like, like I mentioned, and I'm from Brazil, and I currently, I have been living in US for, for like four, four or five years, and man, I'm uh, my background, I started on, in martial arts when I was really, really young. Uh, I, I started to train like uh, judo when I was eight or something. And since then, uh, uh, I, I kept training every day of my life until I got, until I got like professional. And so, so pretty much what I do is go to the gym and, and, and go home. You know, that's, that's my, my life. Right. Gym that's and home. That sounds like my brother Vis over there, man. We don't have the video right now, but if you saw this guy Moicano, he looks like a, a like a ox, bro, built like a bull. That's, I believe him, brother. I believe he, him. He, he's like that too, J Jim. And now Vis too. He's been doing the jujitsu as well, right, buddy? Yeah, he definitely got into jujitsu about six months ago. I, I would imagine yeah. Moicano, you probably started jujitsu when you were a kid, right? I over in Brazil. Yeah. I mean, jujitsu is super popular. Yeah, I, 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 I start in jiu-jitsu at 11, brother. What belt are you? Ah, uh, dude, I'm a white belt. Two-stripe white belt. White belt. Mm -hmm. nice, I only started about Where six months Where are you from, ago. brother? Where are you from? You're from, you from Europe? No, I'm, I'm U.S. I'm uh, actually in Utah, so I'm in the Midwest. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice, nice. Right. Yeah, we're all over today. We got Washington, D.C., Utah, and Orlando. We mm -hmm. got a little triangle all over the country. <laughs> yeah, that's true, brother. Listen, I got I got no training, but you know, back in the day, after a couple too many beers with the boys, you never know what might happen, right? You know, so I'm not a bad guy to have on your side, but I ain't busting out no rear naked chokes or leg locks like you boys. All right, I'll bring I'll bring some body, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah, my brother. <laughs> yeah, That's so nice. Also, I wanted to bring it up, brother, because like you know, I, I know you you you're a veteran of the game and you've been around for a long time, uh, and you and you've been fighting for a long time. Um, but I wanted to ask you, you know. I think I think it's safe to say that you you know your most recent post fight interview has definitely helped catapult you into a great spotlight 
And, you know, some are saying it might even be one of the best post-fight interviews in the history of the UFC. I just kind of wanted to, you know, get, like, what was, like, the emotion you were feeling in that moment? And, like, what made you just go, like, so crazy like that? Because I thought it was fucking awesome, my brother. Like, that was such a great interview. Yeah, it was absolutely interview. great interview. And I was showing my viewers the interview before we got started to give them a little yeah. bit of a background. Man, and everybody in the chat was just loving it. Like, they were like, this is fucking awesome. So... Just like what what were you feeling like in that moment like that? Was that just like pure adrenaline? I mean, you just came off of a great submission over a great fighter. You had Joe Rogan there. You're in Madison Square Garden. Tell me about that moment a little bit. Yeah, man. It was pretty much that because, you know, I'd like uh, to, to be honest with you, I, I had to change a lot because I have been fighting for a long time. I started my career as a professional in 2011. So, so that's a long time to be a mm -hmm. professional. And, and to be honest with you, before, I didn't understand the game, you know. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, I'm not an expert. I'm not the best at trash talk. I'm not the best of, of bringing attention to myself. Uh -huh. But I'm learning, you know. Because before in Brazil, if you talk too much, people want to beat you up, you know. If you say <laughs> shit, right. they want to beat you up. So uh, even on the gym, like jiu-jitsu gyms, people are like that. If you, if you, let's say, you submit somebody higher rank in the U. Uh, and if you say something, they're gonna, they're gonna tell, man, what the fuck you going on? Keep quiet, be humble and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like in business, in MMA, it's not about being humble. It's about making money, brother. Right. And, you, and you guys know the way to make money is get more eyeballs, get viewers, mm -hmm. get people trying to buy your stuff or trying to support you or trying to like build a community, right? right. So, so, uh, after I realized that, I thought myself, I have to be different. And one thing, and and how can I be different? Because and I thought like everybody is the same, brother. Everybody talk like 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 in jiu-jitsu, especially Brazilians, right? Because you have like guys like Conor McGregor and uh, guys like Cerrudo. If you don't, even sure. if you don't like Cerrudo, he does different than the others, right? Yes. And I thought, okay, I just gonna be myself. When when somebody asks me something, I will, I will, I will try to, to say the truth. It's only that. It's the only change that that I like. If you ask me, this guy is bad or, or, or good, I'm gonna say this guy is shit, brother. If I think he's shit, <laughs> or this guy is good, this guy is good. It's right. only that, you know. And when when people are asking me why are you fighting, I, and I and I told. Like I told, man, I love fucking Joe Rogan. I watch this motherfucker every day, brother. And I see him and I say, man, you're fucking smart. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because this podcast things for me is the best thing. I learn English. I learn all, all, all kind of different stuff. And imagine a guy like Joe Rogan that like his guests on his podcast are, are the most random people, right? You mm -hmm. have like scientists and you have Eddie Bravo talking about, I don't know, flat earth or something right. and, yeah, and you right. have like a, a PAG talking about a very specific uh, topic. So, so I just, I, I saw Joe Rogan. I was re really excited. And at the same time I talked, I, I, I said what I was thinking about, man, this is completely disrespect with me. You know, I'm not being on the top 15, you know, because uh, before I was fighting 145 yep. and I was, I, and, I, and I got to the number four spot. I, I was one fight uh, away from the title when I lost to Jose Aldo, a legend, you know? Yes. And after mm -hmm. the fight, the waiting cut was getting so hard for me, mm -hmm. and I went up. So I was number seven, and they put me uh, on the lightweight outside the rankings. I win, a, I win the, the, the next fight in the lightweight, and they remove me from the rankings. So I, I was starting to get upset about that. But then sure. I realized, man, this is all about money, and mm -hmm. it's about, like, people want to see you fight and pay tickets and, and buy your stuff. So so let's go fuck everybody else, man. I, I'm 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 on this business for money too. So let's see what happens. And like you say, I think my stocks went high after that interview and and they even offered me the main event of um, you have seen in Fight Night in Vegas. And unfortunately I got I got hurt, you know? Right. So but that's why that's what I'm trying to do on Twitch, you know, trying to to build followers, build a community, mm -hmm. you know, and eventually make money. So I'm trying to explore uh, more ways, you know. I'm I I'm not going to be just one more, uh, just another fighter trying to 
just training and because I did it all my life. Nowadays, sure. it's time to to try to get this exposure from UFC and do something even better for me, you know? Right. Right. I think that's that's such a great connection. I think a lot of fighters, that's the thing, they end up missing that. And like you said, it, it comes from the background as a martial artist. It's, you know, it's all about yeah. respect. It's all about respect yeah. and you don't want to disrespect your opponent. You get respect for people because you go in there, you train with them, you realize that this training's hard. We're all going through this together. It's difficult, right? Everybody's trying to improve and get better. And then when you go to the UFC, there's a lot of showmanship, right? And so I yes. think a ton of fighters miss that. And then they end up getting like – like the it, it, people end up passing them up and more people get yeah. opportunities because they're able to sell themselves better on the mic and get more people's attention. Yeah. And so they get these opportunities yeah. and then people start to be like, well, what the hell is this? I'm doing really well on my fights. But – yeah. For the UFC, like you said, at the end of the day, it's a business. And so the people who can get the be the most eyeballs and be really good fighters are going to get the most opportunities. And so I think, yeah. I think that's awesome. And you nailed it with that, that last interview, man. And like you said, all you had to do was just be yourself, be full mm -hmm. yourself and go out there. And you got people hyped up. People could feel your energy during that interview, man. So I, if you keep on doing that, and I know like you're an amazing fighter, like you said. So – it's going to be one of those things where if that continues going on into the future, you're going to get those opportunities, man. And it's going to be awesome to see. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and like I, I was saying, my brother, I know people that are way better than me and they have better personality than me and they got cut by UFC because nobody know them. Right. You know, we have like Francisco Trinaldo, a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. and, and this guy, if I, if I tell you his history, you, you cannot believe brother, the guy, Today, he's 42 years old uh -huh. or 43, still fighting. Uh, like, uh, had that tough fight against, uh, uh, what's his name? Rand Rand Randy, Randy Brown. Brown. Yeah, yeah, Randy, Randy Brown, yes. tough guy, you know. But these guys, I'm going to tell you, he's he not going to like that I'm saying to you, but he cannot read, you know. He was so poor in Brazil. Like, if, if he want to, to have meat, he had to hunt, you know. He had to go to the fucking forest and, and try to get something to eat meat brother mm -hmm. and, and he walked since he was like eight years old but nobody knows that shit brother right they, huh. and, and like and, and the crazy thing is he got money from fc and he had he has like 10 brothers uh -huh. and he bought a house for each of his family like wow. his, his his mother wow. his father his his uh, uh 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 brothers and sisters and he doesn't have a house for himself how crazy is that? Nobody know that shit, brother. That's true. You know, yeah. uh, man. If people know that, they would help him. Yes, you know, absolutely. But sure. but Brazilians, they are like, no, I don't want anybody know that uh, my shit is like that, that I'm right. fucking it up or something like that. And they don't want to help. And they sometimes they get uh, sh uh, shy or afraid to be. Yes. So people think they are dumb, man. But this guy, he's like a hero, brother. Yeah. He came from nothing, brother. He came from nothing. And he built his family. He 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 built houses. He helped his cousin and stuff. And he's not in UFC anymore. You know why? Because UFC doesn't know his history. Right. And it's not UFC fault. It's his fault. Yes. You know, Seriously, it's, it's like his manager fault. People that know him and don't and don't bring this up. You know, because this is a, a movie history. You know. And yes. not only that, man. I know many, many, many fighters that they are awesome. They did great things. But the, this martial, the, this martial arts background, hold them up, you know. The yeah. the, the sometimes the feeling the, of being disrespectful uh, uh, let them down, brother. But fuck that, I don't care about that anymore because in the end of the day, UFC is not is not even sports, brother. UFC is like entertainment, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. People go, people watch UFC like they want to watch a movie. They go out, they have a good time. They see people beating mm -hmm. each other, you know, up. Oh, and yeah. and you, ha you have to understand that, brother. This is not like Olympic Games, you know. Yes. This is this is fucking entertainment. So you have to bring something to the table, and that's what I'm trying to do. Yes. Yeah. We don't, we don't want to see even with my bread, bad English, you know. You know? <laughs> even with my bad English. Hey, no, your English is great. great man. No, you do it. Be honest dude. with you. Great I think educator. your English is really no, good. And... But, but I think it's even funnier, you know, if you have a, a <laughs> thick accent. Yeah, a little accent. Yes, you, no, yeah, good. yeah, a little accent. You know, people think, man, this guy is trying hard, brother. Uh -huh. And I'm trying. <laughs> Dude, you're, you're, doing, you're doing great. And like you said, with now with you doing all the streaming and the interviews and some podcasts and stuff, it's only going to get better. 
And I feel like that's kind of talking what you're talking about with fighters, you know, growing into themselves. I wonder how many fighters also don't have much of a following because maybe their English isn't great. And when they do the post-fight interviews or they do the media days, they're not able to tap into that audience as much because of a language barrier. So I feel like you could probably also speak to that and be like, since learning English and being able to speak more English, it's also helped with like, you know, growing fan bases in other areas outside of like Brazil or, you know, other locations. Yeah, 100%, bro. I will, uh, after this Twitch thing that I'm trying, uh, well, I, I really was surprised about, like, I don't have many, many followers on, the, on my Twitch channel or even on the chat, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but are people from all over the world. So people from England, people from Australia, people from, uh, you name it, brother. So it's like internet is such a good tool to engage with people that you never you would never know or meet or, or, or like interact. So I feel we, ha we, we have to explore more of that, you know, and try to, to expand our brand and our fighting and our careers, you know. So I think it's a great opportunity if, you, if you're willing to, to learn something new. And, and it's hard sometimes, you know. Yeah, what got you I'll, – I'll, I'll jump to that too because we're rolling here with that, Moicano. What, what got you into streaming? Was it to kind of, like you say, build that brand outside of fighting and, and, and you know, learn some more English and connect with some more fans and open up some more revenue streams? Or, like, I know you've been gaming for a while too, right? So have you, like, always known about streaming because of gaming or is gaming newer as well? Like, give me the background on the gaming and the streaming because I know that's how we met was through playing some Counter-Strike together. Yeah. No, to be honest with you, I didn't know anything about that, brother. This is really, really new to me because, uh, I, like I said before, I spent my whole life just training, brother. Training, watch fights, uh, 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 you know, uh, or like my, my, what I used to like to do, especially in Brazil, like is go hiking, you know, uh, go to, man, I just like to be uh, on nature. Outdoors, yeah, I love to be outdoors, you know. So I never was a really uh, gamey guy, you know. But I do remember on, on the 2000s, 2001, was when the, the CS Counter-Strike just explode, right? So I don't know how was the scene in, in USA, but in Brazil, everybody was at like ca cafes, like lan house they call in Brazil. Right. It's like uh, uh, where people, they go to play games like in, in land and hello yeah we're still here yeah. we're still here. Uh, you, yeah. you, you listen okay yep so yeah, yeah. and and this the cs i think was be, even before the 1.6 and i i just love it the game brother counter strike and i was, was playing the day. like trying to be yeah like on the long 2000 ago, trying yeah. to long time ago trying to play trying my best every day and i don't know i, I just love it the game mm -hmm. but uh, after that I stopped, you know, because sure. I never had, I never really had a PC on, on my on my house that support games and stuff. So I was not a really uh, a, a yeah. gamer guy. But on the on the pandemic, I was stuck at home, and I have a, a cousin that he is really a gamer. He plays like Dota and CS, okay, CS:GO and all that kind of, and like he plays all the games and he watch Twitch and he does all that. On the pandemics, he say, "Hey, buy a PC. Let's play some CS, some CS:GO." Then I played the game, and in the beginning, I was not liking. You know, it was just more to because I didn't have anything to do. I was like stuck at home. But after a couple of weeks, I got addicted to the game. You know, because the game is so hard to learn. It's easy to learn, but it's so hard to play. You know. Right. And I was man. I I, I want to I want to be better at this game. And since like 2000, I have been playing this fucking game every day, and I, <laughs> I'm very bad at it. That's the problem, brother. And, you know, <laughs> and I, and I try every day, but every day I try to play. Every day I try to train a little bit because I saw it's, it's just like fight. It's skills, brother. Yeah. It's yes. levels. Uh, you have to to be good at s some stuff. And after, uh, so after a couple of years, I start man. I have been I have been spending a lot of hours of my day playing this game. I will try to stream and, wow. and, and see if it, and see if it goes okay, if it goes right, you know. So that's why I start to. 
Because to be honest with you, before I didn't even watch Twitch, brother. I didn't okay. even know about Twitch. But after like uh, in, in the last couple weeks, in the last couple months, uh, I start to, to watch because CSGO too. You know, because FPS yeah, games. You because you, yeah, you watch and you can learn, you know? Mm -hmm. Like uh, you can learn from, from the people that play more time than you. So I think that's what Twitch is all about, right? It's about mm -hmm. like uh, gamers, gamers doing like a community, talking about uh, the game, talking about their lives. So the whole concept, like yeah, I like it, you know? And that's why I try to... I am trying to to grow and, and see if this go uh, if this can happen, you know. Because sure. even if don't grow, I will I will keep playing CS:GO and I will keep it streaming because that's what I do every it's day. A good time, it's ain't it? Too? Yeah, it's yeah. Fun, man. It's, fu it's yeah. fucking fun. You you do with gaming and Twitch like I do with fighting. Like you watch games and you learn. I watch fighters and I learn. You know. Uh -huh. so, I, yeah. It's funny that I was able to make that like connection because like, you know, I, I don't have much experience with with any sort of formal, you know, MMA training. And you said yeah. you much with the Twitch. And it was funny when you said that in my head, I was like, I could definitely relate to that in my own way, because right. that's how I've learned so much about MMA over the past, you know, four years, because I think I've watched almost every single fight night and pay-per-view for the past four years. So <laughs> that that's how <laughs> I am. And with that and this, my man over here, I know I told you about this before, Moicano, but this does the uh, watch alongs on the UFC channel with Jen's. Uh, so I know that he like, could say that the UFC is big on Twitch too. So like, absolutely, yeah. a lot of people doing Twitch, like other fighters that like you know. I know like you know Mike Davis, right? I know he's, yeah. he knows this knows Mike, and yeah, they're, yeah, they're familiar with each other as well. So it seems like There's it's tons. a pretty big culture with the UFC, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice, bro. That's nice. Um, one of the things that you said too that I, I think that a lot of people don't make the connection to is that. Um, how similar like the the mindset between like getting really good at a game and getting really good at fighting is because it, it's yeah it's all like it's all in a it's all a mind game right it, yeah. it's knowing yeah. what your opponent's gonna do and reacting to that before or getting ahead of them in the fight um in the same way when it comes to a game i, I love that thing about shooters and i think a lot of people True. don't understand that is yeah that, you know yeah. when you're when you're in Apex or in CSGO or in PUBG and you've got a guy hurt and like you're understanding how he's gonna move and what he's gonna do and countering what he's about to do, like that's the exact same mindset that you have in a fight. Um, and I, I think that's part of the, I think there's actually a lot of fighters that really love games and it's because of that, you kind of can get that, that same thought process and competitiveness that you would get in a fight from a game. And I just don't think a lot of people if they haven't had that background before in something like a sport or uh, a martial art, I don't think they make the, uh, quite make that connection. No. And, and like you say, brother, neither, neither do I on, before, you know, because right. I just thought, no, this is a game. I remember this game when I was a kid in school because I like guns and stuff. Right. But when you realize it's all about com com competitiveness, yes. you know, mm -hmm. it's all about winning and people like, it's just it's a it's like fight, brother. Mm -hmm. You have to you have to train certain stuff, you yeah. know, so you you be good in certain stuff. So let's say you you have a let's say you have a bad aim, so you're gonna you you, you try to uh, train your aim like you have like bad jujitsu or yes. yeah. sometimes you're good at striking, sometimes you you're good at striking but you miss something. So you have to uh, you know you have to know how to pick on the game, and it's it's, it's a sport, brother. That's the truth. And that's why gaming is a billion dollar industry today because yeah. people get addicted to winning on the game. And and the whole system, like the 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 ranking system is just like belts and promotions in UFC and, and yeah, yeah, true, smaller true. smaller promotions, you know. You you build up until you are on the top. Yep. So I don't that's know, brother. Crazy. Game is crazy and I love it, brother. And that's I think that's why because I, I'm so competitive and when I went to a match and I lose I want to be better. I want to do better. I want yeah. to have better skins, you know? So I think <laughs> everything appeal, appeal to people that are competitive. And so, so you select, you select the games that are more competitive. And, and I don't know, it's, it's just, a, and it's, a, especially for fighters, you know, because uh, before I used to drink, I used to party, you know, but I am getting older. I don't want to, to be honest with you, I don't want to leave home. I yeah. all the, I'd, rather, I'd rather be home all the time 
uh-huh. you know, because I'm That's always right. tired. And That's I feel right. like if you have a PC, you can be all over the place yes. to play games, <laughs> yes. you know? So, <laughs> so why not, brother? Why not, right? Why not? It's that right? recovery Throw, time. Throwers. You get that. You still get that competitiveness and that fun, but you get a recovery. You go hard. You go and have some hard training sessions. You get to come back and still have some fun game, and you get to recover. You do it all of it at once. Yeah, and, and like, and the feeling of winning. Uh, I don't know to to uh, feeling a tough match or have a competitive match, mm-hmm. and 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 the feeling that you got better. You know, that's man is is pretty much like a sport, like fight. So Definitely. that's why that's what got me into uh into cs going in fps you know so so i don't know i am enjoying and i i, I cannot see like i cannot see myself without playing uh video games from now on you know right yeah right now, now you see instead of going out and having beers and eating steak you just make a steak at <laughs> home and play some counter-strike go you know yeah yeah that, that's, that's what happens true. when you get over 30 like us now yeah, Marcano, yeah, you know like you true. don't want to go out no more no right? no just, brother uh, no ha- ha- hang out and, and relax with the family you know eat yeah, a steak yeah. play some games man no that, yeah, that was yeah. a good connection you guys made I, I really enjoyed listening to that uh that, that was good Vis. like you think about it too like you say Mercado, you know like i'm thinking like you know how like you might be in round one and you got to make your read, you know, and then you go in round two and you sink in the win like you kind of did against some of your opponents in the past, you know. And it's like that's like with gaming. You come out in the first three rounds of Counter-Strike. All right. We know that, like, we got to make a different read. And then you go for the go for the kill shot, you know, and you, and, yeah. and you take the victory. So that, that was a really yeah. good analogy. Way to pick that one out, Vis. That was mm-hmm. th- that, that, that was a cool uh thing there and like you said too I, I feel like with the gaming and the recovery and the downtime it's also a good thing to like this and i have talked about this before moicano but it's like when your body needs to heal the gaming can help keep the mind sharp as well yeah. so it's kind of yeah. like a, men- a mental training you know w- when you need to rest the body which you know we know you're going through right now too with the uh with the recovery but y- you started back out some workouts right this week how's the knee feeling you feeling good brother R- ready to yeah start the rebuild Mm-hmm. Yeah, feeling good, doing to the to the therapy every day, and like every day is getting better, you know. And the other thing that Twitch helped me a lot was like this last cup, this last th- three weeks without being on Twitch or being playing games, I would be crazy because mm-hmm. man, I like I'm not leaving home. The uh, yesterday was the first time that I really we really uh, do something different. We came to Orlando, so. So I, I feel like th- this is a, a good way to 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 pass the time, you know, and, and to not be like too anxious, especially when you hurt or something, you know, because before one day without training for, for me is completely crazy. One day without training. But mm-hmm. nowadays with the Twitch and stuff, it's helping me to to recover my knee better. So I'm not rushing to to get back to the gym right away because I, I have. Like I say, I have something similar fighting that I'm trying to get better. You know, of course, I am not on the same level. Uh, 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 on the same level of kids, you know, kids play way better than me. But they I just like the game too, and I'm bro. trying to get better. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. All right, Mercado, I got a couple. I got a couple MMA questions for you if you if you're down to uh, give us a couple of answers. I'll, I want to yeah. start off with just like some MMA fans because I also know like as not only a fighter but also a big fan. I see you've been watching some of the fights on Twitch. I know you talk about a lot of the fights as they're going on on Twitter too, uh, which I feel like I don't always see a lot of the fighters do. So I wonder how many fighters also are as big as to watching you know other fights as they are into fighting. But if I had to like ask you, do you have like a favorite fight of all time? Uh, it could be yours. I was going to ask you that question later on, or it could just be one that you really enjoy watching. Like, what is no, Mike brother? Ima- imagine UFC fight. Imagine I say it's mine. I would be a fucking stupid <laughs> guy, brother. No, you you, you, you don't say <laughs> no. But I mean, uh, I remember one fight that I <laughs> loved it at the time: uh, Dan Henderson against Shogun. I don't know if you guys yes. remember the fight. Yep. Was a, was one of the best fight that I ever see, but. But UFC is so crazy. UFC, they put the fights that the fans want to watch. You mm-hmm. know, it's not like boxing. That's very hard to put champion versus champion. So that's why I feel like I cannot choose one fight because you have always you have 
amazing fights. Let's see, like, even even uh, fights that people didn't think was the best fight. Let's say, like, Cerrudo and Aljo. I like it to watch, you know? I appreciate the the grappling exchanges, the the like the the focus because it's all about that man. It's like gaming, you know. You see a guy trying to do something, he has a strategy, he's trying to accomplish something, and the other guy know what the other guy was trying to do. So the counter. So I, it's 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 very hard for me because you have you have a lot of types of fights. You have fights that sure. are, are like a browse. You have fight that that is like sometimes the guy is very technical and he dominates on the first round. You have competitive fights. So on, on the top of my mind, I remember. Ah, I, I don't know. There is so many good fights. I remember one fight that I love. It was Diaz against McGregor, the first one. Uh -huh. I got so excited fight. about the fight. Aldo McGregor was crazy. There's, like I say, hmm. they they all different fights. Some decision, some fast knockouts. Another one like Khabib, I you I I love Khabib against Gaethje, right? You know, so uh, man, it's just hard to pick one, you know. Mm -hmm. And like sure, you say, sure, most sure, of sure. the fighters they don't watch fights, right? They don't watch fights, bro, because they are they are tired of training uh -huh. and like the whole. I I think it's like you you guys streaming, like you streaming sure. the whole week. The weekends you don't you don't watch you don't much wanna... people streaming. Yep. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Or even you, or even play. I don't know if you play, but no, I heard no. like some streamers they don't play on the weekends. You know, mm -hmm. I think fighters are the same. But but before to be a fighter, I am a fan. You know, I start right. on the sport as a fan, and I, to be honest with you, even today I cannot. Re I cannot. I I every day I tell God, thank you, God, to to for me to be able to do what I love. You know, mm, so it's absolutely. it's not man to to me. I am so grateful to be in a fight, to be in UFC, to provide for my family, uh, doing something that I love. I think it's just like you guys streamers, right? I think it's the same the Definitely. same feeling. Yes, and, and that's why I that's why I'm a fan, brother. And I love and I love watch fights, good fights, and I love understand like why they doing something, mm -hmm. uh, how, why they. Why the guy did that, or how to do it, you know? So I am, I, I always try to learn. Of course, before, like a couple of years ago, I was a little bit uh, saturated and tired of the fights too. But you have to, to, sometimes you have to move gyms, you know? You have to do something different. But, but my love for fight is the same today, you know? You have to, you have to change. Sometimes you have to step back a little bit, but. I don't know. I am a fan of, especially UFC. I, I like PFL. I like Bellator. But I mostly right. watch MMA UFC because MMA in general. But I love UFC the way they put the fights. You know, they put the fights. Man, just just see what they do. Like, the BMF title, Dustin right. Poirier, Justin Gage, uh, Sugar Sean, and, and, and Aljo. You know, all these fights that people want to see. And they put in, they put, they, they they take off the paper and they put live. So, I, I am a fucking fan of UFC, brother. Yeah, I can tell you that. that a lot this year, huh? They've been booking a lot of really like big fights that in the past I think like people have been asking for Dustin versus Justin two for fucking years because that first yeah. fight was great. And yeah, now yeah. This year, you're right. I feel like the UFC just decided this year they're like, yo, it's gonna be banger after banger. Like we're we're booking all the matchups, all the fireworks. Yeah, it I think really seems I like think this it, year they stepped that up. I think they are doing this because they they are feeling maybe threatened by the other companies. You know, PFL mm. is growing. Okay, PFL yeah, is growing. Ask you about Naganu and your thoughts on yeah. that? we brought up the PFL. That was pretty crazy, huh? P pretty crazy, right? Pretty crazy. I, I, I was, I was. Uh, th that that's the problem. Some sometimes people say, Ah, UFC uh, is a monopoly. I don't like this. I'm telling you, UFC has a monopoly, probably. But I like this. Yes, I like. You know why? Because that's the way to make good fights. Who is in Ghana is fighting PFL? I don't know. Yeah, if it's not Verdun, knows. right? Not, Verdun is retired. Many. Right. There's not many. There's not many world worldwide names. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, there is no mm -hmm. uh, stars. Uh, they have good fighters like oil promotion, but it's not about how good you are. It's about uh, that thing, you know, like that, that thing that McGregor has, you know, the, 
public appeal. You know, the people people recognize these fighters. And I feel like I would rather watch. Uh, I would rat, I would rather watch uh, Ingano versus John Jones than him right, going to PFL. Right. You know, so. Yeah. Seems like a lot of people uh, kind of gave Nagano some, you know, bad publicity for that whole move. Like, like at the end of the day, it seems really good for him and, and his, his finances and his family and his security. Right. But like you're saying, right, and like this and I have talked about too, like w what happens for his, like we've talked about a lot in this podcast, is like his brand and uh -huh. his growing outside of MMA. Like you could even argue that this move will hurt him with that, but will help him with the money. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know because we don't know the deal yet. Yep. You know, I, I know he's gonna he's gonna get some pay per view points, but we have to see how many pay per views he's gonna sell on PFL because in UFC was not that big. He, he sell I think three hundred k pay per views. You know, right. it's not like he's a he's a uh, a great pay per view seller. Maybe going to PFL, but I don't know. We have to see the numbers of the. Kayla Harris on, on PFL, right? Was the last pay-per-view. Uh, so so it's everything it's everything too new right now. We have to wait and see if it was a good or bad move. But uh, but either way, good for him, you know. He, right. he got a he got a he got a seat as board of director. He will try to, to grow PFL Africa. And I hope, I really hope everything goes good for him. He make a lot of money and he opened door for another fights. Fighters, but as a fan, I would rather uh, watch him on UFC than than go to PFL and try this new thing. You know? Absolutely. Say hey, this, you got. I, I was hogging the mic there a little bit, so I was going to see if you had anything. Yeah, to, I. Uh... So, dude, I love I love what you you said and you told about uh, this Francisco Trinaldo, right? And how he helped. The, yes. I, dude, I just I wanted to touch back, uh, base back on that because. You, like you said, it, it it's such a I think it's just such like a disservice like to him, and almost the rest of the world that like that story wasn't ever really told for people out there. Like you said, the guy is an absolute hero for doing that, and yeah. helping his family out. And like you said, he he ended up he had all this. His, you said he had, had his sisters and brothers. He bought them all houses, and he doesn't even yes. have it himself. I, yeah, I, I want to know. Um, you said you're you know you're out here you're fighting for your family as well. And, uh, you know, I want what do you have any big goals when it comes to that? Is there some things you want to do when it comes to, you know, the family side of things and whatnot? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question, brother. But uh, to, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. uh, we are me and Trinaldo. We, we, we were from the same city. Of course, he moved. You know, he was from the he was from, from another city, but he moved to Brazil. We were training partners. Right. And that's why I, I and that's why I know his history and right. stuff. But our backgrounds were completely different, you know. Uh, my family, uh, thanks God, they always have money. You uh -huh. know, my, my, my father, he works for like the, he's like a, work for the government. So uh -huh. uh, he, he has a good money. My mother too, they have, they have everything. So to be honest with you, to me, the money that I want to do and, uh, and, and I want to have, it's like to have a good uh, retirement. Right. You know, to don't have right. to work. That's mm -hmm. the main thing, brother. I hope I enjoy your family, right? Yeah. Enjoy my family. I always was scared about work in a regular mm -hmm. job. Always. Mm -hmm. Since as a kid, man, I don't want to go to a fucking, you know, yeah. to be in some place that yeah. I don't like. Yeah. You know, yeah. to be in a, in a cubicle or some shit. Yeah. In a I cubicle. Think. Yeah. Uh, living a miserable life. N not saying like people are miserable living that. I sure, will be sure. miserable. Right. I will be you miserable. Perfect. You know what? Yeah, because I like to be, like I say, I was saying yeah, before, I, I like to be outdoors. I like to be doing hard stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. I like to be running 10 miles. I like to be like climbing mountains to doing, to going knocking to the beach, to out. knocking yes. people out. Yeah, trying to, to take, <laughs> take people's head out, you know? So for me, imagine that me working like a lawyer or something, you uh -huh. know? So that's always what was my, my goal, to live off something that I love, like yes. my passion of fighting. So I want money to keep on that, you know, and to help people that help me too, because I have coaches mm -hmm. that I bring from Brazil. They are, nowadays, they work at ATT, you know, but I bring them and I want helping them and I want to help my training partners from Brazil. That's a good thing. 
I, I am bringing another Brazilian to ATT too, uh, a, a former training partner from my city. He's really good, and I know he's going to do good in America. So I am helping to bring him here, you know, and that's what Incredible. I want. My main goal, my main goal is get money for me, for my family, and help people that help with me, yes, you know, yeah. because yeah. many, many times people don't know that, but without training partners, there is no fighter, brother. You cannot right. train alone. So these guys, they help me to make money. Now it's my time to to try to give something back if I can, you know? And that's why I'm fighting. But, but to be that. honest with you, mo- no, it's not beautiful, bro. It's selfish, bro. I know because I'm helping ah. them because they give me something, you know? It's not like I want to help kids in Africa or shit, you know? <laughs> I want to- <laughs> you know, I'm trying to, yeah, I want yeah. to help them because they help me. And I feel that's not bad. Before I... Before I used to think, no, I'm bad because I think like that. But if everybody just help, if everybody just right. help, who help them, the world will be better. Right. You know? No, absolutely. Just that. That's why it is a good thing. It's not selfish. You know, I get, I get it. You said, you said yeah. they, they help you, and so you help them. But it's like you just said, if everybody was able to help the people around them, then the whole world will be better because of it. So that, for that, that's an awesome thing. And I love what you said, and I, I connect with that. I'm sure Hambino connects with that. Anybody who's a creator, I'm sure there's many people listening right now out of their, their own work that they connect to that, with that. When I got into streaming, all I wanted to do was to be able to do something that I loved for work. And so I didn't feel like I, right. I had to go to this 9 to 5 that I hated. Um, and so I yeah. totally, I can, I totally connect with that with what you're saying about, Hey, you know, you wanted to do something exciting and fun of your life to make a living and then be able to go and live off of that and still, ha- you know, be able to spend time with your family and do the things you love. And so I absolutely yeah. love that. It's yeah. Cool. It's spe- especially, especially because, because to be honest with you, brother, we talk in a podcast and I love talk stuff like that because life is an illusion, brother. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, yeah, it's an illusion. So you, you have to go over that, try to set your goals and, and try your best to make what you can because in a couple of years, you're going to be dead, brother. You know, right. in a couple of years. doesn't matter if you are the most healthy or wealthy man in the world. In 80 years, 7 years, 9 years, even if you live off that, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna die. So try to do something with your life, something good that, that help, uh, like people that help you, like I say. And try to enjoy it too because life is too short. For you not hey. buy something that you like like i watch i like watches bro i want to buy bad, good watches mm-hmm. so I, I want to have money you know so yeah. so that's my my main goal my main goal what is watch? to get what's money the watch? what's the watch I, you got to have one on the front of your mind if you're a watch guy what, what's the one you want i, I want the daytona I, it's not Ooh. it's not even that Which expensive one? brother Which uh one? The panda, do you know the Ooh, panda? I know the panda. My, I, I, my, <laughs> I, might, I won't lie, Moicano. I knew, I knew we'd be friends. I like, I like a nice watch myself. You like a nice watch, I man. Like a I nice just... watch myself, but that panda, <laughs> brother. I think after you, you know, your next main event victory, yeah, we might have to yeah. hook you up and get you a panda. We'll find you. A yeah, deal, we have to right? get a panda. You know, uh, before I was, I was, I was big on like gold watches too. I know many people don't like gold watches, hey, uh, but but I bought one. Not gold, like double tone, but scratch is too much, brother. So now I just I stand get still. Some steel, bro. bro. Yeah, steel, brother. Steel is better than gold. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, bro. That's awesome. <laughs> all right. Um, oh yeah, that was good. I got a. Uh, all right, so yeah, I got another question for you. Um, what's like? So if I was gonna say, Boycotto, what's what's your favorite submission? Real naked choke. Got, gotta show. be the ring, Nick Choke. Yeah. I, was, because, I won't lie, I said to Viz, I, I, I sent Viz the little notes that uh-huh. I made, and I said to Viz, I said, I'm going to ask him what his favorite submission is, but I think it's Rear Naked Choke because you have one, <laughs> isn't it? Like 10 wins, yeah, isn't 10 it? Wins 10 by, wins. By, yeah. in, in your pro career by the Rear Naked Choke. Mm-hmm. What, what is it that makes that one feel so good for you? Like, is it just something that you've practiced so much? When you're so comfy once you're there, you know it's over. Is it a height thing? Like, you are tall for lightweight too. Like, what do you think is the secret sauce there? Is that, is that just Money Moicano's go-to? Now, I will be honest, it's just easy, brother. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's just easy. It's just well, easy. Hard, you know? hard, brother. Yeah, you, you, yes. don't have to, you don't have to know all the setups, you know, the positions and training a lot. Mm-hmm. Everybody, man, if you teach a four years old how to do a rear naked choke, he can kill somebody. You know, it's just right. easy. You put right. your arm, you squeeze, and, and it's done, you know. And especially in MMA fights, 
especially with people that don't have like a good grappling background, yes. they're gonna give the back. Yes. Always, especially if the guy is striking, because he's not used to defend himself on the ground. Mm-hmm. He's not used to, to, like, to to replace the guard to be comfortable on his back, you know, on, on the mat. So what he does, he tries to get up, and, and all the time you you can see that over and over. Even experienced fighters that are not grapplers, they give the back all the time. So it's just a thing that people does in MMA. They give the back. And if you have a guy like me that is very good, that spend a lot of hours training uh, how to take the back, eventually I'm gonna submit you because Damn. because think, think about that, think about that. When I'm on when I'm on somebody's back, they cannot fight me. You know, yeah, they cannot punch me. You are dominating them. So mm. is a is the best position a fight to be is on the back, on the or in the mouth. And if you if you are on the mouth, you will start to punch in them. They give the back too because they don't yeah. wanna get beat. You know, so uh, to be honest with you, it's not for everybody, like like you say, because some some people they are too short and it's hard for them to control because they have like some, a shorter legs and arms. So, but if you are tall like me, it's just easy. It's natural. You know, you don't have to 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 work sure. really hard to get the back and to and to be able to to choke somebody. You know. So it's it's just natural. I feel it's just easy. If you know what I mean. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, I was gonna say I I like your point. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in this here to give me a little bit of the jujitsu knowledge. But like I said, with no formal MMA training, I think with the amount of UFC that I've watched and the wrestling that I've done in my past, you know, younger life, that like even I could throw in a rear naked choke, and I might even sneak in a little body triangle in there, you know, because I'm watching (laughs) the right people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. This like. What are you going for, Viz? Now, second stripe, white belt. I know you've been learning. Maybe you could uh, let like us and Moicano know. Like, what's the submission for dude, you? Dude, like, I this is go to. I love Kamoras, dude. I love Kamoras because yeah. like once you get that grip, you have such good control over somebody. You can sweep with it. You can finish with it. And it's like if you ever had to use it in an actual fight, it's like absolutely just like devastating, right? Of Kamora, yeah. what it does to the shoulder and whatnot. Um, I love what you yeah. said about the rear naked choke though, because you know I I doing jujitsu we've got some some brown belts some black belts in there and like when someone is so much better and they have such good control and they're able to you know flatten you out or something and they're starting to sink in that rear naked choke it's there's a a feeling that the other person gets where it's like shit dude this guy he's got me this is a terrible situation it's and it's one of those things you said it's like you if you learn a a rear naked choke great to for defense and like you can I mean, put someone to sleep in like five seconds with that. And it's just such a dominant yeah. position to be in. So I can definitely see why that would be one of your favorites. Yeah. And, and it's not only because, like you say, like you like Kimura. But mm-hmm. to, to, the guy, to know the Kimura, you, you have to know the details. Yeah. You know, you have to yeah, grab the, the wrist. Yeah, do a Kimura. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 yeah. You cannot, you cannot teach a four years old to do a Kimura. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, so, absolutely. But, but for me... I think in fighting and in life, more simple, better. Yeah, you know, for sure. If it's simple, if if you can teach, if you can teach a kid to do, this is easy to pass. It's easy to yes. teach and it's easy to do. Absolutely. You know, and I love Kimura. Don't get me wrong. I like Kimuras. I like, and and, and because Kimura is such an elaborate uh, technique that yep. you can do many many things. You can get a Kimura, get a sweep, mm-hmm. or you can like get a sweep, go to the uh side control with the kimura yep. you can go to an army bar from a kimura you can go from a, a katagatami sometimes you have the kimura you can roll and get the katagatami so uh-huh. there is many 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 positions of of kimuras and triangles and arm bars and i love it too but but i like to keep it simple you know because that ways and uh you don't you don't have to have many attention on the details because the rear naked choke is more is easier for me you know absolutely and, and it has such good transfer in mma where you know in jujitsu if someone knows you're trying to do a, a rear naked choke or anything like that they 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 can really defend against it but like you said you get into mount you start throwing punches that person yeah. is thinking oh dude oh, i just want these punches to stop hitting me right they roll over and immediately boom you sink that in before they're ready for it and you can just completely end the fight Exactly. Like, like did, you, did you guys watch the last UFC? The, mm-hmm. the Jailton yes. Malhadinho, the Brazilian guy, was that man. Mm-hmm. Uh, take down, mount, 
punch you, give the back and, and, and take yep. the rear naked choke. I think it's just a it's just a good combo, you know, when you have a good grappling, yes. a good uh, good wrestling, good top control, and you have a good rear naked choke. Like Khabib used to to be good too at at, at this, you know. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, very I feel, much so. I feel like uh, it's a good thing for you. To, uh, uh, keep it simple, especially if you if you learn, you know. Because I see some people, they think that they they are good in jiu-jitsu, they are black belts, they are world champions, but they're not gonna go to MMA fight and pull guard and do crazy stuff. Yep. I mean, I see Kron, 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 yeah, I was gonna say, Cron Gracie, not yeah. long ago, will definitely prove that one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. A couple weeks ago, and looked stupid. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, if you ask me, it he looked did. stupid, brother. I don't yeah. know what he's doing uh, man, in let Montana, me but he might want to go to Coconut Creek and get some lessons with Moicano. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. I think the Graces, <laughs> the Graces, they are. I think it's the mentality. It was like watching a fight in '94, brother. Right. This is not mm -hmm. 1994. Mm -hmm. 1994 so anymore, you know. So, right. so, for for me, look at like a guy that don't deserve to be in UFC. That's why look at to me. Maybe he doesn't like what I'm saying, but mm. to me, look like an amateur brother, you know. You're Even right, though you're bro. Brazilian yeah. champion and stuff. And guess what? If you want to to light weight, I can beat you up too. If you don't like, my friend, there is no problem. <laughs> hey, come on down, and we'll show oh, you too. There bro. is no problem. Uh -huh. right, but sometimes, come, if he gets mad, down. no problem. Right. Or, or up rather that's right because he's in featherweight yeah come on come on up Moicano will show you something <laughs> you know that's but good, what bro. I'm that's saying what I, what I'm, no but what I'm saying is brother because you know so so keep it simple you know it's like boxing too it's like striking you see what what's winning fights nowadays the jab simple yeah cross simple Rob Fon, hook, jab, yeah. simple yeah check hook. Or, that check hook is getting check everybody hook, right now or, or like uh Calf kick, you don't need to be yeah. a fucking mm, world champ, exactly. world Muay Thai champion. Kick. If you know how to, to kick a fucking calf, you're going to do good in MMA, you know? How hard you is know it to, to block a calf kick, Moicano? Because you see a lot of, like, it, I see, like, fighters are getting better, but there was a while where, like, dude, it seemed like you could just win by calf kicks on a lot of people, right? Yeah. Is, yeah. is it hard to block a calf kick, or, or, or is it these people are just not training the, the check? No, de depends, because, like, when people fight striking, they fight, mm -hmm. they fight tall, tall yes. like mm -hmm. boxing strike, you tall. Because you tall, you have more reach. You can pop that jab. You can use the, the, the leg to, to, to avoid the punches. But w when you fight MMA, a lot of people, they, they have afraid to, to get taken down. Uh -huh. So they, they keep low. They keep the, the base low. Mm -hmm. And when your base is too low, it's hard for, for block the kick, you know, because your knee is too bent. You know, yes. so you have to find a you have to find a balance and be and be good base uh, low, but be able to defend the kick. And people are, are picking up. You know, before yeah, they were they're too. Getting better. You know, they're getting better. They're getting better, but it, it it's hard when people are not used to. You have to train this a lot because the the the, the other thing is the way to to block is different than a leg kick. Mm -hmm. When you do a leg kick. You can just uh, uh, turn your knee, you know, to the left. Let's say if you are on the outside, right? Put the shin on the outside, yeah. Uh -huh. But the leg kick, you have to turn the knee and put the your foot on the ground. You cannot, you cannot take your foot off the ground. So you just mm -hmm. you here, you just turn okay. your leg and turn your knee to the left. So the okay. technique is a little bit different, you know. It's a okay. little bit different because the guy's kicking, the guy's kicking lower. So you have to keep lower. You cannot. Uh, uh, stand your your foot, you know. I don't know if that makes sense. No, no it makes sense. sense. It, and you can't see me right now, but I, I literally under my desk was moving <laughs> so I was my leg. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing the same thing, bro. Uh, I try to fucking practice what you're saying. I'm like, uh, okay, so now okay, I know that if makes I ever sense, need to block yeah. a fucking calf kick. I don't let my yeah. foot up, bro. You know, I just yeah, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. Here that people yeah. think I'm probably dancing in the audience, you know. But yeah, yeah. No, I, <laughs> I was over here practicing that, man. That's that's great. That's nice. Great. That's the, the the right way to do. Try to do right away, brother. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, may, maybe maybe one day, you know, I know Moicano, Viz, you've been talking to me about doing some some IRL streaming, and I saw him do a little bit the other day, too. He do some some mat rolling, you know. Maybe, maybe we'll do yeah. a little we'll do a little Twitch Dude, Coconut Creek Florida visit meet yeah. up, you know. Bring Moicano can teach us some things, and we'll do some like 
the pro teaching that the amateur. Well, I'd be the amateur. Bro. This is you know starting his journey. But I, like, I, dude, you, know, you like brought in this Kimball the, the best so. idea of all time, bro. Right, Actually, and that's what we'll man, do. We, we could do we, something like that on Twitch. That, bro, of course. Little Florida trip, you know. Mm, you know I don't know. I don't know if I don't know if Twitch is if can. You know, I don't think Twitch can have fights, but. I, I was thinking about if you if you put streamers to fight each other like YouTubers, do you think this is a th that the people can do that on Twitch? Um, uh, I don't you know, know if they could do it on Twitch. I mean, they I the UFC shows fights, right? So right. they'll show like yeah. fight nights sometimes on their channel. Um, so yeah. I don't know. Like you might be able to do something like that. I think you maybe to maybe Twitch. not maybe not fighting, maybe grappling. You know, you definitely, you get you definitely grappling. Do grappling. You can that I know you can. Grappling. You know, you, you can, can do, do like a Twitch tournament, fighting tournament. You know, uh -huh. and put people to fight each other in grappling. <laughs> you know, that's yes. a good. Maybe of course, like on the same rankings, on the same level, like white belt. Right. I don't know if there is many black belts, but. You know, yeah, who knows we can try like put Mike Davis in, right? you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be crazy. You, do you train? Do you train with Mike a little bit, Moicano? He said that you guys uh, were friendly. You, you and Mike know. Each yeah, other? Mm -hmm. yeah, nice, I used nice. to train. He, he used to be here in, in Coconut in Creek. Top team, we train. Right? Yeah, in top team. But n nowadays, I think he's he's training in Orlando. Uh, okay. uh, Fusion Fusion Excel with uh, another guys, you know, but but Mike Davis is a really good training partner. He's a really good training partner, you know. Uh, awesome. uh, 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 he's a guy that pushes up, push you, push you that's up you on want. the train. Yeah, you always that's want what you somebody want. that's gonna make you better. You know, you don't want somebody to Dude. just like beat up on. So I was, I was doing push-ups for subs the other day in here, and Mike was in my <laughs> chat. And he's like, "You gotta do it." I was doing like one push-up or sub. He's like, "No, do three, do four push-ups." He's like, I'm, 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 like, "I'm like over Mike's here gonna be busted out like a thousand push-ups." So I could totally see that Mike's the type of guy like, "No, we're doing more, huh?" That's totally yeah. What he yeah. Is. You thought you were just doing ten, huh? Uh -huh. Hundred, drop down and give me a hundred, buddy, huh? That's flipping hilarious. Uh, yeah, that's well, nice. We got some fights tomorrow. And I'm more kind of, I, if you're good with time, Viss and I are hanging out. So you just let us know, brother, if you got to go. I know yep. you're traveling and all that. Um, I had a couple more things to bring up. If, if we want no, no problem, brother. No, I, I enjoy to talk about MMA. My, mm. my wife is on, the, is on the pool already with the kids. So I'm okay, brother. Frank. Okay, great, great. Um, yeah. So I, what I was going to say next is, all right, well, we got some fights tomorrow night, too. Um, have you, you taken a look at the fight night yet, or do you, do you know who's fighting? Uh, to, to be honest with you, that, there is only two fights that I want to see on the card. That's uh -huh. not a really great card, though. Right. I agree with you. you. Know? Give, me those, give me those two fights, and let me know what you think is happening in those two fights. Wh which ones we got? Yeah, I want to, I want to uh, let me see the card, but sure. I want to watch my two training partners, two uh -huh. training partners. Uh, Zach Omeya, oh. he's fighting Ilya Il 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 Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You're that's talking a, Rodrigo. Rodrigo Nascimento. Hadri yeah, Rodrigo. Rodrigo. Yeah. Let me pronounce it right. Yeah, I Rodrigo. said that very, No, very, no, it's, very it's good. good properly. <laughs> Your Portuguese is good, brother. <laughs> a caralho, you know, that's... <laughs> caralho. <laughs> Let so me see. I want to see all the fun. there, too, at ATT with, with you guys yeah. down there? Man, what was him that got me on Twitch, too, because he has ah. a channel on Twitch. But he play. plays like Fortnite. He plays ah, Fortnite. Okay, okay. Uh, all the time I make fun of him, bro. Don't play Fortnite, <laughs> bro. What the fuck? <laughs> no, uh, let's see. So, no, actually, we have a couple more fights that I want to watch. So, Ilya, Ilya, Ilya Lachif mm -hmm. versus Rodrigo Nascimento. And I think it's a very good fight for him, especially because Lachif is a wrestler. Yeah. He's a very good wrestler, but he's very small for the heavyweight. He is. He's, he's very small. Like, let me see he, how how tall are he? I, I don't have the. Yes, five foot eight, and and Rodrigo is six foot two. So that's a yeah. Huge so you can see like discrepancy. Rodrigo gonna have a, a a a very good advantage on the striking, uh -huh. and and Rodrigo to me is one of the best heavyweights at jiu jitsu. His jiu jitsu Ooh, okay. is really okay. good. His, I love it. His takedown is not is not good. He's not a guy that gonna gonna go over there and take him down easily, especially right. a guy like Latif. But if he can eventually the fight go to the ground mm -hmm. and, and he's gonna be able to capitalize on that. So I think uh Rodrigo gonna win that. Okay. okay. You know? Other fight that I want to do that I want to watch. Uh Carolina Kovayevsky, Ivanessa Demopoulos, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, uh 
Carolina trained with us. She's she's a very uh, uh, good girl, good fighter. I like her, mm -hmm. and I want to see her winning. But I don't really know about much about the other the other uh, fighters. So Vanessa, Vanessa. Big yeah, I, I, I think if she's I a wrestler, right? A little bit. Take down take down heavy approach. I think is her. I just her remember style. her for for. For I the think Joe it was Michael Rogan Beast. interview. The Joe Rogan interview, yeah. yeah. She jumped yeah. in his arms like or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She went, she went yeah. pretty viral for that one. Listen, man, that's she the She went pretty though. viral. Do something yeah, with Joe Rogan. Rogan. I, when, Joe I'm Rogan's fucking guy, win, man. you know? Yeah, and, it's and true. There's a little starlight there for it's something true. like this, you know? So uh -huh. you guys, you and Vanessa had the smart ideas with these with these opportunities, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't really remember. I don't really remember... Uh, her her style. So I'm not gonna say sure. who is gonna win that. Nah, but so. I want to watch that fight because Carolina. Right. Uh, another fight. That's fight I want to watch a lot. Lightweight bout. Diego Ferreira versus Michael Johnson. I was gonna Brother, bring that's... that up to you because I know Diego's yeah. back after two years. He he had a tough go before his two year break. Um, I'm excited to see him get back in action. And Michael Johnson's kind of like. It seems like he was kind of out of the picture, but he's had a couple good fights, like beating uh, Mark Diakisi, however you say his name, not too long ago and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, Diakisi. Yeah. So that, that yeah. I'm I'm excited for that fight too, actually. No, I'm really excited because uh, Diego Ferreira, he 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 last loss was against Matheus mm -hmm. Ganrota, a training partner, very very good grappler. Mm -hmm. Do you train very athletic as guy. You train with him? Too? Yeah, I train with Matheus. Yeah, Matheus is one of my, my, my training partners, a good okay. friend. That's a good and, fucking and, training partner to have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's really good. And, and he beat so he beat Diego Ferreira. So in the paper, I think Diego Ferreira is is going to win, but we never know. Two years layout is too much. Right. And and like Michael Johnson is he's crazy. Like yeah, he has a good crazy, yeah. Yeah, he, he has a very good a punching power and speed on his hand, and he's not easy to take down. He has a good defense. Of, uh, of course, he lost to the top of the division, uh -huh. but that that's what makes this fight interesting to watch. You know, I want to see how it goes because he's a on the paper is is more to, towards Ferreira, but I don't know. Ma Mike Johnson can pull that out. Can pull that out. You know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, has Ferreira. He's had a little bit of weight problems in the past, I think too, with 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 making weight. But maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. So mm, I, hope, I, I don't hope remember to see that. A nice, nice clean camp for him, and a nice and a nice fight back in for his first fight in a couple years. So let let let's go, with Diego. Let's let him get the W. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what? I think I think I think he gonna he, he's going to win, you know. But I would not put my money. That, yeah, that's a, a fight like know. that. We, you never know, you, you right. mean? And I'm, I'm saying that because the other fight, the heavyweight bout, I don't know. There, there's some fights that don't have like, the odds right now. Do you, do you see the you main know? event? What do you think? Mackenzie Dern, Angela Hill? What do you think? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think, I think, I think Angela will win. Yeah. There She's been, yeah. She, yeah, yeah, that, that she might even be watching this right now. So good thing you said that, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think kidding, no, I think kidding. people But she's been fighting well recently and 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 uh she had a great fight against Lupita who who kind of reminds me of like a Mackenzie Dern style sometimes. So Exactly, do, especially against Grappa. Let me see uh her resume, but I think he beat like Amanda Hibas, right? Yeah, uh, she she did. Yeah, she, she uh, or she she fought against Amanda Limos and it went to a decision in round three. Um, okay, so she she, she, yeah, she didn't get the decision. decision. The, the thing about Angela, I mean, she's had such so many good fights and she's been so close in her fights. And I'll, straight up, I'll say it, some of them. I think she did get pretty robbed in some of them from the judges, but uh, she's a she's a, a tremendous fighter. I think it's gonna be a really good fight. Yeah, for and and like the, and her is just, what I like about her uh, her style is she's very. Uh, active uh -huh. on the striking, yes. right? Yes. Very active. Very she punching a lot. Fighter. You know, very pressure fight. I don't think Mackenzie can hmm. can really deal with handle that. You know, right. you yeah, handle that. Yeah, she's gonna try to take down. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's gonna start to to be tired of taking down. She's gonna have to, and she will, she will eat some strikes. But it's a tough match because, of course, uh, Mackenzie can if 
she can put her on the ground, of she course, will be a, her. Yeah, he might yeah. get the submission. But I don't know. Angela has a good submission defense too. So, right. so definitely, if I was allowed to bet, I would do some parlay with that brother. Uh huh. Definitely. Right. You know, Angela Hill. <laughs> right now she's plus one forty five. If you put Zekome over here, minus two hundred and and another couple of fights, you could make good money. Right. But I'm. Yeah. I don't like, bet Otto anymore. So not doing nothing with that. We just want that to no. be loud and clear. You hear me? Dan? Yeah, no. Hey, Dan, <laughs> yeah, we're, not gonna... we're clear FBA, over here, my yeah, man. No. Yeah. FBI, 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 open up, FBI. baby. FBI, oh. FBI, 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 you making legal bets, motherfucker? No, bro. I'm just telling you. <laughs> My opinion on the fight. <laughs> just talk, uh, yeah. That's, so good. that's that's great, man. That's great. I'm also uh, I'm kind of interested to see if uh, what's his name, uh, Fialo, can get back in the in the W column. He was mm -hmm. doing like mad good for a little bit there, and then he just started. He he got lost two knockouts in a row. So <clears throat> yeah, uh, that should be a good fight versus Buckley. Those guys like to throw hands, so I feel like someone should get knocked out in that fight, most likely. Yeah, it's yeah nice. most likely, most likely. Fialu, he, uh, he was taking fighter after fight in UFC, right. like, week, he fought right? like three times Dude. in two months or something back then, didn't he? Something yeah. like that. Yeah, I don't, I, I never think this is, man, 2022, he fought one, he fought one, yeah, two, April, three, April, April five May, June. He fought yeah, five times, June. Dude. Crazy, right? He fought this April 16th, crazy. May insane. 7th, and June 11th. Huh. He he fought three times in 90 days. Maybe he That's needed to pay a bill bro. or something, you know? Like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> he <laughs> needed to pay <laughs> some gangster or stuff, brother. <laughs> yeah, I don't he know. He got what some it... money from the mafia or stuff. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Some debts to pay. He said, you better get in that octagon, brother. Or you better get, come yeah. Over, see you, bro, you know? Yeah. That's insane. I don't know if I've ever seen someone fight for five times in one year man yeah that's a lot wow. bro. that's a lot and he and like his last fight was against salikov salikov he's a fucking he's a bad, beast he, yeah he trains at att sometimes his, mm -hmm. his strike is just he's just crazy you know mm -hmm. so i don't know that joaquin buckley he, to be honest with you i'm not really excited about this fight i don't know why yeah you there's know? not there's not really a fight on here that really sticks out to me overall uh, no, to be that, honest with you, this Diego Ferreira and Michael Johnson, I'm really yeah, want is, to watch that be fight. A really good fight. Okay, it, because maybe because it is my one, division, guys. right? Mm -hmm. True, it says lightweight. You have there's input, you know, you can follow that yeah. right there. I want to, like I want that, to watch Chase Hooper too. I was gonna but, say to next fight, I was gonna bring up a Chase Hooper, like, but 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 this other guy, man, who is this guy, brother? I don't Who know. Is this guy six one, six one, brother. Let me look him up really quick. He 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 yeah. only has one fight in the UFC and it's his only loss. Yeah. So he, they're trying he lost to build to, uh, the Rebecki, yeah. Matus Rebecki, the Polish uh, fighter. He 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 was actually really fucking good, I think. So I guess this guy he, in his uh yeah, Matus Rebecki. He's he's seventeen and one, and, and that's who that guy. He, got he trains at ATT too. I I I already oh, had okay. trained with him. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you'd have yeah. to. Add, You'd have to ask him what was up with Fior or something like right. that. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. Don't, I don't know what happened there, but yeah, he lost to a decision there. So yeah, I guess we haven't really seen much of him, so we're not yeah. we're not sure about him. But Chase is, you know, he, he's he's young and like yeah, he's been kind he's of young. taking some damage in there. Like it'll be interesting to see how he's coming back from that TKO loss because he got knocked out in the first round in his last fight. Yeah, yeah, I, we mean uh, lost. Me and Hamp, you know, were talking about it a little bit before this, but, you know, we were kind of mentioned, you know, Sage uh, Northcutt had fought again recently and, like, how long, yeah, how young he, he had entered the uh, the UFC back back then. It's been, like, eight years, and when he entered the UFC, he was 19. It was crazy to see that he's only 27 right now. Um, yeah, he's then, too young. And then Chase, you know, Chase came in super early. You know, I'm thinking of, like, Raul Rosas Jr. that had just joined the UFC and all these really young guys come in, and I think they, they come in that, you know, they want to make a name for themselves and be, like, you know, one of the – the youngest champs or something to make a crazy run when they come into the UFC. But a lot of the time I find that I think they come in just a little bit too young. Um, Unexperienced. Yeah. They got, you're going up against the best, the best fighters of all this experience. And mm -hmm. it's, once you get to the UFC, it's, you know, everybody's an insane fighter in the UFC compared to anything in like the amateur scene or outside of the UFC. And so I, I think yeah. sometimes these guys come in just a little bit too young. What do you what do you think about that? What do you think about when, you know, some of these fighters are coming in at like 19, 20 
and right. and Roll fighting sauce, like do right? do you think that's a good idea do you think they should stay out a little bit longer like maybe only take one fight a year what do you think about that it really depends you know because i i could say like uh they they should wait a little bit but uh-huh. look john jones jo- jo- john jones right. was 21 killing everybody you know right. but everybody. i guess i guess we have only one john jones right yes. so yes. everybody's trying to be the next john jones everybody's <laughs> trying to be the next uh Khabib, everybody's trying to be the next GSP, you know? Right. So uh, what I think is the team and the management, they have to be more aware yes. of the position of the guy where he really are, uh-huh. you know? Because Chase Hooper, uh, he's a good grappler guy, but and I fought him a grappling match. Mm-hmm. I fought him a grappling match, so he's good. He's not... He's not let, let's see how he's going to do on lightweight because uh, I didn't feel he was really strong, you know, right. and right. especially with punches, you know, he's technical, but I don't think he's really strong. We, we go, we're going to see tomorrow if, and I think this is a good opponent for him, 6-1. Right. But I mean, when he got into the UFC, he was clearly not a, a well-rounded fighter. Uh-huh. He was not a very good boxer. He was a jiu-jitsu guy yep. that pull submissions out the guard and stuff. So on the beginning, I don't think he was ready for championship level, you know? Yeah. So the management, yeah. you, but it's, it's really hard too, yeah. because let's say if, if the UFC knocks on your door and, and you have 19 or 20 or 21, and they say, right. hey, I want you to fight in the UFC, and you say no, you might never get the you invite that again. opportunity no. again. Or, you or you might, might never have years, the opportunity. Right? Right. Yeah, so... so so it's mm-hmm. right. It's really hard to say. Th- that's up to the management. How how they the, the relationship with, with UFC because some manager. I'm tell you something. Some managers they have a crazy relationship with with UFC. Uh-huh. You know they can put fighters mm-hmm. very easy. Another manager not so. So it really depends on everything. But I feel you should go to the UFC when you are ready to mm-hmm. fight the best. Right. When you are ready to strike the best, when you're ready to 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 grapple the best, so so sometimes people go too soon, but sometimes they don't have a choice, you know, because right, if they right. pass the opportunity, they they're not gonna fight in UFC anymore. I don't know if you understand what I say. No, absolutely, oh, no. I totally get what you're saying. I th- yeah, both of us, I think we're you did a great job explaining mm-hmm. that. Do you? Uh, I was to bring this up. Do you, do you? It's got to be hard for these young guys to have a very well-rounded game. Because of just based on like their age, because kind of like you're saying, more kind of when you're younger, you might focus on one specific martial art a little bit more than another in order to yeah. learn and ex- excel. And like, you know, most people, let's say they start a martial art at like seven years old. By the time you're 20, that's 13 years. How many different martial arts have you actually been able to train that much? And I think yeah. what you're saying with somebody like Chase Hooper, you see that with somebody like Raul Rosas, you see that. That yeah. young kid, you know, he went in against... Uh, his last opponent and was just outclassed on the feet. And, and, and honestly, that, that his, his opponent did a great job of scrambling with the takedowns yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I like wonder if like, you know, like you said, these guys get that opportunity. They probably feel so much pressure to take it, but really there's only so much you could train by the time you're only 18. Right. Like, yeah. yes, it's a, yes. It's a game. It's a game of experience at the end of the day. And it's like, time in martial arts is better than timing in martial arts you know it's like they say yes. about the stock market you the market right you're watching too much warren buffett my <laughs> there we go baby i love it listen i'm like you brother i'm trying to get some money uh, you know, and, and when you stream you got to figure out other ways to do that too so if you ain't doing some businesses you better have some good stocks you know that's true yeah, that's, that's good true. investments too. yeah <laughs> but yeah, so it, it seems like it's hard for some of these young guys in order to get to that level that soon. And I think that's what maybe you could talk about this a little bit. I do know now that over the past couple of years, the UFC has established its performance institute. Do you think that those types of things will help fighters evolve and get better in their games where they have holes at it? I feel like we've already seen that happening with some. Is the PI good for that? Or do you think that these fighters should be getting that type of stuff from their, their home gym and their, their home coaches and that type of stuff. I think the PI is awesome, especially because okay, of great. that, you know, because and, and it's changing the game. You can you you can see a lot of fighters, a lot of even champions moving to Vegas to mm-hmm. to have the training camps, you know, 
but to train at the PI, you know, to, to, to because, man, have you been to the PI, Hambino? Yes. I've well, not. I, I've this been. has, but I've, I have I've done not. A full, I did ah, a full this... four with, with Forrest. Forrest showed me through there. This full oh, insane. that's awesome, my brother. Mm -hmm. Man, is is a is a such a great place. The technology, it's a great facility, right? You yeah. know, it's a it's a crazy facility. So if you have the opportunity to, especially the strength and conditioning, the like the the PT, the everything is awesome, you know. But sometimes I feel they don't have like classes, and of course they don't have classes because it's not about one team. It's about the whole UFC. So you can use the facility. So I think people are moving to Vegas, training, let's say, extreme couture and stuff, but going sure. to, to the PI and uh, taking advantage of the whole facility. So right. I think it's a game changer, and especially now that they they build like a billion-dollar PI in China. Mm -hmm. we got, we're oh, going shit, to see a lot that. more. Ch yeah, the, the UFC, like a couple of years ago, started to yeah. build a huge faci facility oh, wow. on China. So... you. In, in, in the next 10 years, we're going to see a lot of Chinese. We see mm -hmm. every day more. And, and it's, it's, it's all about investments. You know, it's all about build the culture of MMA in China. Yeah, and they're sure. doing the same in Mexico. You know, now they have like three or two champions in Mexico. Three champions, actually, right? Yai yeah. Rodriguez, uh, Alexa Grasso, and, and the Moreno. Uh -huh. So they are building a... a PI facility over there, and you can see UFC wants to grow the sport. They want another fighters to have the same opportunities that the champions. And I feel the PI is an awesome thing, you know. Uh, I I don't know. For me, like I have everything that I need on ATT, but I feel sometimes uh, I I think I should go more to the PI or, or should go more to other gyms to uh, to improve my game, you know. And, and I'm planning to do this. Right. I always wondered that, too. Like when, when obviously you're part of a, a gym, you're going to probably do majority of your training at that gym there. Do, do gyms like ever like collab? So let's say your buddy Mike's up in Orlando at the Fusion. Like would Fusion ever come down with Top Team and you guys would do like a mutual training day with like fighters from other gyms to kind of like iron sharpens iron? Or does it usually stay more in-house? Like you're going to train with people that are also training at ATT. No, people usually they train because the problem train with people off for, from people. another gym is eventually you're going to fight them, right, you know? Right, uh, right. And, the, and this problem is is happening in ATT right now all the time because they we have... fight each other. They have got to fight each other because we have so many people on the lightweight, mm. uh, on the top 15, you you have Dusty, number one, you have me, 13, you have Granty, uh, mm. 15, you have uh, Arma, uh, number right. eight, you Grant. have, you have, you have Mateus, too. number seven, so Jesus. we have, I don't know, 10, maybe eight, seven guys on, on, on the top 15. And outside the top 15, you have another, another other lightweights on that. They are not on the top 15, but they are very good fighters, you know, like the other Matthews, like Neto, like uh, Thiago Moises. So, mm -hmm. so this is beginning to be a problem because we have to fight each other. Yeah. And other yeah. gyms is the same thing. You go to the other gyms and people know your game, you know. So it's a, it's a very hard situation. It's not an easy situation. But if you get stuck too much in a place, you, you're going to be behind. So you have to find a very balance valid. to be in another gym and not give it up too much your game or train too much with people or be friends with people that you maybe fight because it's a bad situation, you know, fighting a friend. So yeah. it's hard. It's tricky and you have to find a balance. And that's yeah. what I'm trying to figure out. I wanted to ask you that too in follow up because I could only imagine like what it's like you, you know you you as like I said playing a lot of sports in in my past life you know you develop that brotherhood that camaraderie especially from a a very intimate training sport like mm -hmm. wrestling or MMA or jiu jitsu right so it's like it it's got to be hard right to fucking fight somebody that like you know cuz when you're fighting like you're inflicting pain like you got you're going to yeah. beat them you know mm -hmm. like i'm going to yeah. hurt you that that the, the mentality yeah. changes so i could only imagine how fucking hard that has to be and ha have you ever had to fight some like a uh, uh, a close friend or training partner before whether it was in the ufc or outside of the ufc or you, have you not had no. to do that yet mm -hmm. no i never okay. had to do that you know the first time that I, I was supposed to fight a training partner was against arma my last fight that didn't happen because of my knee so it's a new situation 
What? Is he a top team too, Armin? Not when I was fighting him, but yeah, today he is. And that's oh, crazy, crazy because because he fought he, Gamrat he, not long ago too, and that's what he I'm fought Gamrat not long ago, not long ago, and he's gonna fight Neto, and they are training on the same mat. Neto is a Brazilian guy. They are tra- they, they're gonna fight in a month, and they are training together. You know, so that's crazy. So, that yeah, is crazy. I don't that fucking over. I never had to deal with that, you know, especially mm. because Armand, he, he's not a uh, full time in ATT, you know, he's yeah. from I don't know. Armenia or something or Georgia, I don't, I don't, I, I know it's Eastern Europe. So mm-hmm. he came, he trained in Vegas, he trained because in the end of the day, I know he wants to fight uh, the best. He wants to fight Dustin Poirier. He want, you know. Yeah, so he's always calling. He, I, he was call, Who is he talking shit about? Mike Chandler, right, or something? I saw not long ago. Yeah, he always calling people out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's why he doesn't go too much ATT because we have so many mm. uh, guys over there, ranked guys and guys that he could potentially fight, you know? So, uh, but right now he is at ATT training over there. And I think okay. this is crazy, you know, but I don't, yeah. I don't fucking do the rules. I just play the game, you know? Yeah, you <laughs> I don't do make it. the rules. I play the game. That's right. That's yeah. right. That, yeah, that is interesting. So now when you go back, like, to ATT, yeah, if you guys are going to, like, rebook that fight later down the line, it's definitely, like, kind of weird that he's now at the gym, right? Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Especially hey. especially because what was tricky was my head coach, Pahumpa, he's, he's, he's head coach, too. You know? Uh, uh, okay, so, yeah, then what happens? Who do, who's corner, you know, like, who's corner would yeah, you go in, right? So, yeah, so that's the problem. So oh. he was cornering nobody. He said to me, don't please don't get don't pick the fight. I don't want sure, you guys sure. to fight. Uh-huh. And he said the same thing to Armand, but Armand said, No, I want to fight. I don't want to be inactive. And I say, I want his number, brother. Uh-huh. His number eight, and I'm 13. I have to fight uh-huh. him. You know? And so he said, Okay, I'm not like cornering. That, that's good too. And, and and he said, No, I, I, I'm not cornering any of you. So you guys are gonna have to have a lot of coaches. And so but but that was you know, that was it, so it, were, were, did you have another coach that you were going to bring to the fight before yes. you got injured? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so my head coach would not be on my corner and and and, and worse on my training, you know, because mm, the if you have a, a, the preparation, that's the important thing, you know. Yeah. But it is what it is, and some it, it's, it's like business, you know. I understand yeah. his his point. I know what, of course. You know, he don't want to choose sides, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. But it's just a weird situation, you know, when you are, you are fighting a guy of the same gene, even if you are not his friend, because me and Armand, we're not friends. Uh-huh. But it just makes uh, it 20 weird. partners, you know, it's weird. Right. It's weird when you, you have to divide coaches. And and yeah. look what's going to happen on PFL next show. Two, the guys, they are almost brothers, brother. They are and not friends. They are, yeah, what fight are we talking about? Nat- Nathan... And Haush. On the PFL? Nathan shoot up? PFL. Nathan shoot and Haush Manfio. Two Brazilian guys. Two. One is the. How do you say when you have a child? He's his. Oh, godfather know? or something like godfather. that? Godfather. Yeah, godfather. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. So they're, they're fucking space, brothers. Like you said. No, they are fucking brothers. <laughs> they're fucking yeah. brothers. I'm telling they're you because. They're not even like, friends, bro. <laughs> they're not even friends. Yeah. Because when Nathan he won the first PFL tournament. He helped a lot. He buy a car to 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 Haush, his friend. You know, he bought a car. He helped with money. He helped with wow. like training, and, and they are fighting because the PFL is a tournament. So how crazy is that, brother? Yeah, now yeah, that they insane. got no choice. They just have to do it. They got no choice. So so uh, it's just crazy the whole situation. You know, but it is what it is. It, it's yeah. part of the game, I guess, to some it's extent. Part of the right? game. You can't avoid mm-hmm. all these types of situations. I feel like eventually you have to. You either have to change or move up, kind of like Aljamain and Marab, right? Like Aljamain's like, I'm not gonna fight Marab. Marab's not. I'm yeah. not fighting Aljamain. So Aljamain's gonna try to probably beat O'Malley, and then, like he said, he's gonna go up and then let yeah. Marab come behind him. So like, if you're not gonna fight each other, one of you guys has to like at least maybe go down or up, right? Which so yeah, it seems yeah. like it just it makes it hard to navigate it no matter what. You know, it's a big yeah. change when you have a friend like that i never really looked at it like that 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 was some some good insight from from you to like educate me there like absolutely i didn't realize how 
common that was, you know? No, that was v especially yeah, in ATT common. because it's a, yeah, it's a big team. And man, all the time they have people fighting each other. I personally just don't think it's good for the gym, for environment, for the coaches, because especially you have to divide coaches, you know? And, and you, you make coaches fight each other, if you know what I mean, you know, competing against each other. Because, of course, if you're supporting an athlete, you want him to win. But sometimes you, you're training two athletes and they're going to fight together. You have to choose one side. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, like I don't know, but ATT, it's business. I would have been like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to coach Moicano because this, <laughs> this guy just came here, you know? Like, yeah, so may, yeah. maybe maybe that's my New York loyalty, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, guy, right? You know, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna, but, like, yeah, I see no. what you're saying. That's got to be interesting to navigate, man. I, I, I can yeah, only imagine. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, freaking, man, I, I had a, that, that, this has been great. I just yeah, want to say thank absolutely. you, Moicano. Thank, thank you, thank so you much for this. The... Like, this has been a great yeah. time. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the chat. Uh, everybody's loving the insight and, and the conversation. So thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, guys, don't don't forget to show Moicano some love over on his Twitch page. I've been dropping it in, the, in, yep, in, in my chat. I know Viz has been doing that, too. So hopefully we get we get you some 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 new eyes on the channel. Listen, Moicano, he likes opening up CSGO crates. He wants skin. I will right? start. I so will start. When, I will when start, he yeah. starts getting the viewers in, he's going to start opening the crates. So I told him, like, listen, you come on the pod. I bet you we get you some more eyes so you can start opening up some good CSGO skins, you know? And then you get the money from not only the UFC but also the Counter-Strike Go, my brother, you know? Yeah, yeah. exactly, my brother. All right, well, I got, I got one la last funny question to ask you. And, and, and I don't brother. know if you answered it already on Twitter, but if you guys don't follow Moicano on Twitter, also a great follow on Twitter because he is a funny, <laughs> funny, funny motherfucker, this guy. <laughs> right? And he posts some funny shit. So I don't know if I ever saw your answer, but I saw this tweet that you put out a long time ago, and, and I know that a lot of people responded with funny things. All right, I'm going to put it straight. How many Joe Bidens can Moicano <laughs> take in a fight <laughs> at one time? <laughs> All right. Man, context. Was, uh... He asked this question on Twitter. And people, some people were like thirty, some people were like ten. So I want to know how how many Joe Bidens at once is Moicano gonna take down for the naked choke? You know, Man, that's that's a good question. And I I was asking myself that really. I don't know why, what happened, but I but I think, man, how many Joe Bidens can you can you fight <laughs> at once? Uh -huh. You know, uh -huh. because. Because he's old and everything, you know, in right. let's say you let's say you punch him and he falls. Everyone. How long can you keep it until they until they beat you? Hundred, two hundred? I don't have uh, idea. How many but... right hooks can you throw, Boycotto, before you start getting Yeah, tired, yeah, that's know, the like... question. Yeah. How long can that's you go the... against the heavy bag? Because that might be the same amount of time. The, uh, yeah, yeah, it's man. It's cardio, so, right? So, right? So we, we don't have to calculate in numbers, we have to calculate in time. So I can fight I can beat Joe Biden for, let's say, 45 minutes, one hour. <laughs> uh, up to you, you know? Yes. I'm going to say 45 minutes. Uh -huh. and, you have to, and you have to calculate how long it takes to knock him out. Uh -huh. and, you know, so I don't know the basis, but I think 45 minutes uh, hit, hitting the Joe Biden is a good number. <laughs> Right, bro. Then if you, you think yeah. about it, you got to do at least thirty in one minute, right? So then if you do like yeah. forty-five minutes times thirty, you're probably looking at like we're, an we're easy twelve hundred Joe we're Biden. Talking you thousands, know? Of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thousand Joe oh, Biden. At, at least a thousand Joe oh, Biden. That's, that's <laughs> that, that, oh, that was a good question, right? Hell yeah, that was such yeah. a good question. Bro. That, that's why when, when I when I was making my notes for the cast, I I, I remember seeing that tweet. So I said to Viz, I was like, I'm gonna ask him something funny at the end, just to make like a fucking joke you know and, uh -huh. and i felt like that was like the the perfect one that is, that is uh, yeah that i saw you say so man uh <laughs> I, I i'm clear here on my end i, I got nothing else this you got anything in closing uh for for the man himself i, or I just want to say, wanna say uh, yeah i want to say thank you and thank you for coming on and doing this and sharing your story and everyone else's story and uh i really enjoyed it man it was an awesome time and i wish you nothing but the best and uh your coming fights in your career and Dude, I'd love to see you take on that belt and win that belt and have that shit strapped around your waist one day. Yeah, thank you so much. And th mm -hmm. thank you thank you so much, you guys, for giving me the opportunity, especially because you guys are big on Twitch. Uh, I'm pretty sure that it's going to help me. Mm -hmm. But even even if it's not, I had a good time, you know, and every, every time that you guys want to uh, talk yeah, about fights, you can call me. Yeah, let's do it again sometime soon. Yeah. 
and we're gonna yeah, and i'm gonna i'm gonna dive in into the technology and i'm gonna get this shit fixed that way next time we got the cameras everybody's online it'll look like per, you know super professional and you know not only does moicano make the money by knocking motherfuckers out he, <laughs> he makes the money with the face too all right uh -huh. he's got the money yeah there, good looking guy so we want to get his, yeah his, let's his, go his face on the screen you know get him all out there so Hey, Moicano, I would love to do it again. I know Vis would love to do it again sometime. So we'll, we'll, we'll plan that and we'll, we'll get that going. And, hey, maybe we could even start like a little Twitch show or something. With the, with, with, with yeah, the bro. Right? Especially, like, especially because you guys like MMA, you, you know? Yeah. You can try to figure out something to do uh, That's right. before the fight. So after the fights and do a, like a little bit of show. I'm 100% down, brother. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to commit myself to this Twitch thing and make it happen, you know? And, and of Let's course I need it. help because I don't know shit, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, bro. Sure. We, 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 got you, dude. We, 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 we would love to help you out with anything you need, man. You know, you could always message me, and this is fucking awesome, too. So you could always yep. just reach out to Same. this as well. We're o o okay. open book for that stuff, brother. And I definitely say that when that knee heals up and I see that Moicano on that main event headline, I'm booking my flights. I'm coming to say what's up and watch you knock them out, all right? Let's go, my brother. Let's of course. It, Yo, let's go, brother. All right. Hey, Moicano, have a great time in Orlando with your family this weekend, my brother. And thank you so much once again for coming on. And this, thank you, my dude, as always. Yeah, no this problem, This shit was man. awesome, boys. Yeah, it was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, people that are watching, please go to my uh, 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 Twitter, yeah. Twitch. Yep, Help us right. to grow. Instagram. Recommend to friends. Instagram, the whole shit, brother. You, you guys got a know merch shop, brother? You got a Moicano.com or something? Money Moicano? Brother, we are working on that. I work all right. on some t-shirts, You got brother. a good brand manager? Get, get you yeah. going with all? Okay, good, good. Yeah. I, I, no, I like to hear uh, that. We, we are, we are working. Go. Let's get, get money t-shirt, brother. That's right. I want, I want to wear okay. it on stream, my brother. All right? Let's go. Let's go, my friend. All right, boys. Hey, you guys have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you legends fucking soon. Thank you so much again. Yo, later, Thank everybody. you so much, everybody. Us. Ciao. Ciao, carajo. Ciao, carajo. Valeu. <laughs> Boom. That was freaking awesome, dude. That was freaking awesome, everybody. All right, everybody. Thanks for being here. Thanks for chilling. Hanging with me in the pack today. Hey, man. If you're out there, you're new to the channel today, hit the follow button before you go. You can also follow me on the gram. TSM underscore Viz on the gram, Twitter, TSM Viz, TikTok, Viz, YouTube, link in the chat. Hey, man, if you're out there, you know someone else that would enjoy watching the channel that doesn't know about the channel, let them know about the channel, baby. Send them the link, tell them to tune in. If you're looking to grab any of the merch, it's on the ViswolfpackShop.com. We got all sorts of stuff on the ViswolfpackShop.com, including the Hydra Jugs to help you stay nice and nice and hydrated this spring and summer season. You need a 70 ounce water jug, boom. Put it next to your desk, whether you're working, streaming, whatever it is. Take it with you to the gym. It's got a nice carry handle. Keep you hydrated throughout the day, baby. This will pack shop. We also got all the t-shirts, the way better tees, all sorts of stuff. We got tank tops up on the shop as well. We got also some coffee mugs. Hey, you picked up some Madrinas. You need a new mug for your Madrinas coffee. You want a way better mug, cracked and jacked. Maybe some of our emotes up on the shop. All sorts of hats. All sorts of attire over there on the shop. 